let's go ahead and finish the algebra section with numbers 41 to 50. What are all the values of x that satisfy blah? Well, it's an inequality, but we can just treat it like an equality or an equation until we need to change it back. So this is going to be 5x is equal to 30. We can actually just keep it greater than or equal to 30. And that means x is greater than or equal to 6. And that's your answer. And again, you can always test that out by just saying, does 7 work? Does 8 work? Does 6 work? Does 5 work? Well, 5 shouldn't work because it's not within this realm, this range of uh, answers that does. Um, so that's just one way to test it out. Find the values of x and y that satisfy this system of equations. Okay, we've got two equations, two unknowns. A lot of ways we can do it here. I'm just going to do the stack method. So I see that I've got uh, negative 2y here and a positive y here. So I'm going to multiply the uh, top by 2. So we get 2x, 2y, and 6. Because now when I stack and add, I'm going to get some cancellations. So 3x and 2x gives us 5x. These cancel. 6 and 14 is 20. So x is 4. And now we just plug that into any one of these to get the other one. Uh, x plus y was 3. So 4 plus y is 3. So y is negative 1. So we've got x is 4, y is negative 1. Solve for all x that satisfy this. Well, you might look at this and freak out because it looks crazy, but really it's not that bad because we want to know when this equals 0. And the denominator is irrelevant because the denominator will never make this equal 0. It's only going to be the numerator that matters. You can also cross multiply and see that this just goes away. So really all we care about is when is the numerator equal 0 or when is 5x minus 20 equal 0. So we get 5x equals 20 or x is 4. So the answer to this one is just 4. A is inversely proportional to B. So remember, inversely proportional meant A times B is going to equal some constant K. So if A equals 10 when B equals 3, so A is 10, B is 3. What is A equal when B is 5? Well, we can multiply this out and get the K. Or we can just go ahead and say, well, this is going to have to be equal to A times B is 5. All right, just set up the equation that way. So we get 30 equals 5A, therefore A equals 6. Now moving into a little bit about functions. So we were given this function, we have to find these out. First, f of zero, so go ahead and plug zero in. We get zero squared minus zero plus one will be one. Here we have four squared minus seven times four plus one. Well, this is gonna be 16 minus 28 is negative 12, plus one is negative 11. Here we actually have to plug in uh, an expression. Uh, but as I mentioned here, you don't have to expand it out. You just need to plug it in. So this is gonna be a plus b squared minus seven a plus b plus 1. And again, don't expand it, no reason. 46, if this and this, what does x equal? Well, remember here, you don't want to plug negative 5 in for x because we're told that the function itself equals negative 5. So instead, we're going to set this equal to negative 5 and solve. So we get negative 7x equals negative 14, or x is 2, which is your answer. All right, here we're given a table. And we want to know what is f of g of 1 equal. Well, first, let's figure out what g of 1 is. So here's our x, and here's our g of x. When x is 1, g of x is 2. So this is equal to f of 2, right, because g of 1 is 2. And now we just figure out what f of 2 is. Well, here's x is 2. f of 2 is 5. So there's your answer. Given this graph, what is f of negative 0.5? Well, we go ahead and look for our x value. Negative 0.5 is right here. We go up go right here, that's where the graph hits, and that's about 2.5. So here, the y value is 2.5. f of x equals 0, where x equals. So we want to know, where is the function equals 0? Where does the function hit the x-axis? So that's going to be here at negative 2, here at 0, and here at 3. So our three answers are negative 2, 0, and 3. A symbolic functions questions. We're given this expression, this equation or this function really, and then we want to figure this out. Well here, remember, just replace, wherever you see an a, replace it with two, wherever you see a b, replace it with three. So this is going to be two squared plus three squared minus two times three. So this is just four plus nine minus six, which turns out to be seven. Now for a transformations problem, changing f of x to this shifts the original function. Well, remember when you've got it inside the parentheses, uh, it's going to move it left to the right, and when it's minus, it moves it to the right. So this is two units to the right. And then when it's outside the parentheses, it moves it up or down. And when it's a minus, it moves it down. So this is three units down. 